We're live. Oh. We're live on okay. YouTube and Facebook. Let's get live on here. We're going live on Instagram. And then, then, then there's Instagram. Is it not live? We're having some technical the technical <laughs> technical difficulties with the with the internet here. This is the first time we've done the live at five at the house. Okay, we're live there. Whoa, we're here. We we're live it. everywhere. Um, we're live on Instagram. We're live on YouTube and Facebook. Um, howdy, howdy. Oops. So, what do we want to talk about? We're going to start off. Let's just chill for a little bit. Let some people jump on. We got on a little oh, bit early. My hair is crazy. It's like halfway wet still. I'm drinking a keto whiskey Coke right now on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. We're going to be staying up super late, butchering lamb, uh, processing lamb. So that'll be good. And that's what'll be good. Um, what up, what up? How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's Wednesday is off to an amazing, well, it's almost over. So hopefully it's coming to an amazing end. Um, but I thought we would jump on here and talk about our preferred and top picks when it comes to exercise equipment because we've we've used so many different gyms that we've got a pretty good feel for what we like and we don't like but also selfishly because we want to ask y'all what y'all's preferred gym equipment picks are because we have some extra space in our gym and we're wanting to fill that out with the top equipment pieces so we'd love to get your feedback on what's in what's in store what do y'all like use and what do you what would your must-haves be if you had your own gym um so Let's dive into that. Crystal, Oops. what are your top three picks? Let me do it. I I'm accidentally moved that. Um, my top three picks, I should have thought about this before, would be a leg press machine. Leg press. That's pretty, it's a, it's a you can only pick three pieces, one of those is going to be a leg press? Yeah. You okay. can use so much with leg press. Like, Especially if you get the leg press hack squat. If, you, if I only had three, I would pick that, a barbell. Does that count? Do I have to choose a barbell? Yeah, it a barbell. Be already included in any gym. All right, let's, let's not count free weights then. So you've, okay. you've got dumbbells, you got free weights, barbell plates, just equipment, like machine or plate loaded equipment. What would it be? You got a leg press. I don't know. It's too hard. I would obviously include some adjustable weight benches and a squat well, rack yeah. in the free weights. If yeah. you got that, you pretty much got everything you need. If we're getting fancy, I would probably go with a hack squat over a leg press. I would go with a leg press. I love the vertical hack squat specifically. However, we are going to get, hopefully, we're going to get a hack squat and leg press in one. Yeah, they make them so that all you have to do is move the placement of the padding, and then it becomes the opposite. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty handy. You have um, two more. You really didn't think about this, did no, you? No, I didn't. I did not think about it. Um, I think I would do... I do like the um, glute ham raise because you can do glutes, hamstrings, lower back. You can do abs. You can do a bunch of stuff. So I would do a glute ham raise. And nice. okay, you go, you go. I'll, th I'll think of mine. All right, so I said a hack squat. I think it's really important to have, if you're able to have at least one type of cable tower attachment, because there's so much you yeah. can do from an isolated standpoint with a cable attachment. Um, if you have two towers and you can do like wow. crossovers, uh, all the better. <clears throat> Our piece of equipment that we have in the gym currently is nice because it has basically two cable attachment towers, uh, multiple cable attachments, but you can use it for cable crossovers. Um, it's also got a quad extension hamstring curl on it, which I like. I do not ever use the bench press attachment of the equipment that we currently have. Most machine bench presses, I honestly just don't like. I get a much better stretch, much better uh, contraction with, you know, barbells and dumbbells and cables than I do. The, oh, the front bench press machine part. We don't use it so like, much that she even forgot it was on the equipment. On it, and I was like, "There's not a spot for that." No, the, the bench press section. 
So having a, a singular a singular tower with a cable adjustable cable attachment, so yeah. you can do a higher or lower cable, would be definitely one of my top picks with the hack squat. And then my third and final. Do you think of your third and final? No, yet? it's too hard. Too hard. Um. I really like laying hamstring curls. You know, there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that you can get creative with with free weights and dumbbells and cables. But the type of contraction you get with a lying hamstring curl is hard to replicate with just getting creative with free weights. So you can definitely do it, but from a machine standpoint, a laying hamstring curl is a pretty nice piece to have. Um, all right. I, wanna, I, I don't know. I can't tell you. She can't tell us. Stephanie says uh, she loves her elliptical and she has a total gym. Total gyms are pretty legit, too. You can do a lot of stuff with total gyms. Um, I'd love to hear y'all's, like if, if you had a recommendation for something that we should put in the gym, we, we're going to have a lot of extra space in the gym. So if y'all recommend us get something, um, I'm all ears. So uh, hello excited. from Phoenix. So excited y'all are moving back to Northwest Arkansas. We live in Rogers. Very nice. Do you know this person? I don't recognize the Instagram name, but I know them maybe. What's up y'all? Top um, three squat rack, adjustable bench, leg press. Yeah. Yeah. See, those would be my picks if we didn't have the free weights included. Yeah, squat rack is is pretty much king. What's up, savages? So you had a great interview with Lane. Yeah, it was. Uh, I didn't know what was going to come out of that interview, but I was hoping for the best. The thing about like on your podcast. Yeah, I had Lane yeah. on my podcast. Yeah. Um, there's so much negativity in the space. There's like. There's, there's negativity between the carnivores versus the vegans. There's negativity between the low-carb versus the carb-based group. Lane is obviously very – he's not anti-keto. He's, he's oftentimes painted in the anti-keto light, but I wouldn't consider him anti-keto. And there is a lot of dogmatic thinking in the keto low-carb space. Like I don't think we can deny that at all. But I wanted to just bring him on the podcast and talk civilly because there are a lot of things that he says that I agree with. And I don't want his positive to be overshadowed by his negative and people just not be open to what good things he has to say as well. So my whole take is there's definitely some things I disagree with him about. I, I don't think he's very tactful about how he's handled certain conversations. But like I said in the very beginning of the podcast, he was one of my introductions to natural bodybuilding. And for that, I am forever grateful. Um, so I just wanted to bring him on to the show and just talk and figure out where the common ground was because there's so much, there is a lot of common ground out there. And I feel like people would do better to try and focus on that and highlight the positive as opposed to fixate on the negative. Belt squat machine. That That's a really good, good one. I tried to choose ones that you could do multiple exercises on, but that is a really good one. Ear hustling while I work. Ear hustling or ear hustling? I think ear hustling. Loot um, drive, leg press, press Smith machine. I don't, wouldn't choose, I personally wouldn't choose the glute drive. I also don't love Smith machines. I never like Smith hate machines. Them. Yeah, I never like Smith machines. However, um, I do want to get one of those glute, I told this to Chris the other day, I want to get one of those glute drive or hip thrust uh, platforms with the low bench with the slight it's just angle. just a platform though. You use yeah. a barbell with it. That way you can just roll the barbell up and you've got that platform right there. So I would be all about that. Full cable tower. Yeah. Yeah. Can't be. Can't Definitely go same with my gym. I usually slide an adjustable bench and convert the cable machine into whatever I need it for. Yeah. Pretty much. That's pretty much what you can do. Keto Chris, I really want the hip extension thingy to strengthen my lower back for my gym. Hip extension thingy. What's the hip extension thingy? I think that the she's talking about the glute ham. Yeah, yeah, the glute ham raise is good. Yeah, I really want to get one of those. Um, how to build? Oh, how to build thoughts? Bowling ball. Those ball bowling ball delts. Oh, those. Um, delts are tough. Delts are one of those that like grow pretty slowly, and it's kind of like I found that for me. Training my delts is kind of similar to training my calves. My calves would not grow until I started training them more frequently, and they seem to respond a little bit more higher rep style movements. Some stuff I can really see a lot of success with, like five rep sets. Other stuff, like calves, it's got to be 20 reps or more for me. Um, I really see a lot of positive growth. 
Um, and I have to train a little bit more frequently. So you got to kind of like just play around with it. But that that seems to work really well for me personally. If you had to pick one piece of equipment that you would use for the rest of your life, what would it be? Barbell. Yeah, probably barbell. Because with that, I could do pretty much anything. Yep. You can do pretty much anything. Um, yeah. Chris says, watch your new video on the new compound. Super exciting. You said you will have like a boutique in the front with bricks and merchandise. Does that mean we can stop in and buy things during the week from you? Yes, absolutely. Um, usually, let me clear the, clarify though. Because Robert's going to be like, yeah, anybody stop by anytime you just join us. Pretty much like Robert and I are on and off calls and on and off podcasts throughout the entire day. And then there's like Ellen, who is pretty much at the front most of the time. But then she's also the one that packages everyone's bricks and everything. The crew is always working. So we're all always doing things all the time. So I suggest that people set up meeting times or times to show up. There's going to be a little boutique. It's not even boutique. It's, it's kind just, of a boutique. No, it's not. It's just like a little area of samples of things so that we don't have to go rummaging around to show people exactly what it is that we sell. There'll be like little samples of all the apparel and all the bricks and things like that. But it's not a storefront. Yeah, it's not. We it's, do not sell in person there. You still have to purchase it online. It's definitely not designed as a storefront. But if someone is in town and they want to get... Uh, some of the bricks or some of the apparel, we, we can definitely fix them up. There. Yes, yes. I would just suggest letting us know that you're going to be on your way. Otherwise, you can get those cute little bells. You'll never know who to get. They ding the bell. Ding. And so they, when so Rob, Robert's on his podcast, all you hear is ding, <laughs> ding. <laughs> Ellen, Ellen ding. will come. <laughs> um, no biceps are very cosmetic vanity, but curious how to build some size and not injure my elbow. Recovering from elbow injury from overworking previously. Great question, Andy. Um, biceps, I train biceps, I actually don't train biceps a ton because you do use your biceps a lot in other movements. Um, but biceps I've found really respond well to kind of similar to what I was saying about calves and shoulders. Kind of that's, that is a common thread amongst all the muscles that are smaller muscle bellies. Um, so like calves, sh uh, shoulders, biceps, those are all much smaller muscles than like back and legs, for instance. Um, so you, they tend to respond pretty well to higher rep more blood flow base sets definitely throw in some heavy sets so when i'm doing biceps i'll do some you know eight eight rep sets of super heavy hammer curls and i'll cheat a little bit on those but then i'll do super strict you know dumbbell alternating curls uh supinated cur alternating curls at like 20 rep sets and really focus on the contraction twisting that wrist at the top of the movement to get that good squeeze um but yeah blood flow is key when it comes to the biceps I see a video with Smith Machine help guide for squats. We don't have a Smith Machine to make that video. I see a video with, that's what I'm guessing they're saying. Smith okay, let's talk about Smith Machines and squats real quick. All Smith right. Machines can be helpful. However, Smith Machines prevent you from using your body's natural, don't play with that. Crazy loon, my Range hair of tie. Um, they prevent you from using your body's natural range of motion. Imbalance. It, it, it messes with a lot of things. So a lot of people will begin using a Smith machine when it would really actually be better to do like a goblet squat with dumbbells or an overhead squat with dumbbells or even with a kettlebell or with no weight at all. I would rather someone started with those lighter movements than with a Smith machine because the Smith machine is actually going to, it's actually going to teach them to do squats a certain way, which is not the way that their body is going to be able to balance very well once you get an actual barbell on your back. So for me personally, I would rather my clients or whoever start a different way and learn to balance and build that core strength rather than using the Smith machine. Smith machine can be really fun for like, you know, reverse lunges or even like some presses like Smith machines are kind of like box squats. There's a, a, a point at which yeah, they can be great. A good, yeah. There's a point at which they can be incredibly useful. However, just as with box squats, I see a lot of people using the Smith machine developing bad habits and then when they go to do an actual squat with free weights those bad habits 
they do most is get comfortable squatting to a box and they, they transition from that to a normal squat they don't go to depth or they have this fear of bottoming out and, and not being able to get back up so it's it's great to use but you don't want to use it exclusively and develop those bad habits can you can your core be worked daily anything else that can be done a few times a week if you are exercising pretty much of any sort you are probably using your core. If you're not, then you're probably not doing a lot of things right. But you are likely using your core with almost every other movement that you're doing. That is the base of every single movement that you're going to do. However, if you're talking about like working abs, abs and abs are something that Robert and I do almost every day. Mostly Robert. But yeah. um, you can work them every day. I just wouldn't over exercise them. Like I would use them as like a superset or something. Um, hi, Robert. Can Crystal do any of the one rep exercises from the video? This is Theo. He's the one that sent me the Thor's hammer challenge. And the oh, two, two finger I can't do the Thor's hammer, but I think if I was using a women's bar, I probably could. But the like the actual men's bar, I cannot do that. This was actually pretty cool. Anybody watching this right now, YouTube Thor's hammer challenge. That was and, so hard. And try and do it. It's humbling. It's a 45 it pound so bar. And you've got to hold it with both hands. You've got to hold it like a certain way. All with both your hands on one side of the the ring stop, the collar stop, the whatever you want to call that, the collar stop, and pick it up without without using your legs or anything as a fulcrum. Yeah, so super hard. It's pretty tough. We had Ellen and Chip out there with us trying to do it. Pretty yeah. funny. How long did it take you to sell your first high ticket coaching package? We neither one of us started with high ticket. I still don't really we, think I yeah, have high ticket. I don't think either one of us have high ticket, but like right now, uh, so when I started coaching, my coaching was a hundred bucks a month. No, I think it was ninety bucks a month. I think mine was fifty. Yeah, it was like super cheap, um, and that was with us communicating with our clients every single day. Um, but we didn't have any credibility when we first started coaching because nobody knew who we were. Yeah, and we didn't really have a proven track record. I bumped it up from ninety or a hundred or whatever it was to one fifty. And then to 200, and then I stayed at 200 for probably two, years. Uh, and then I just recently bumped up to 300. Um, I would like to do a high ticket, high ticket where like it's probably, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred, or something like that. But then I bring people out here, I like coach them in person, I cook with them. Like I don't know what that price point would be. I would have to crunch numbers, but that is what I would consider high ticket, um, and that would be something I'd love to do. I just have to figure out the logistics and work it into the system. But mm -hmm. um, coaching is all about credibility. Like there's so many like coaching I'm and done right now. Um, and I don't put much weight in like, the, the online um, accreditations where like you go and you get like a yeah. three week course and you're certified X, X, Y, Z. I don't put a whole lot of stock in that. What I put a lot of stock in is consistent proven track records. Like if you are consistently having great client outcomes you're there for your clients you're communicating with them regularly you're there supporting them not just from a nutritional standpoint but from like an emotional standpoint from a you know psychological standpoint there's a lot more to coaching than just making macros and a lot of coaches just make macros send them an email once a week with some macros and call it good and that to me is just not coaching and not something that i would think people should pay much for um, yeah robert and i are very much so like we do it because we actually care about people and a lot of times like we will have conversations with each other because we will have poured so much into a person and and like even the outcome of the client was really hard to, to digest for us um but like we still do it because we care about people we don't care about the money that comes in like i will fully refund if someone comes to me and says that they were unhappy with me or my coaching or whatever full refund because to me it's not about the finances it's about like helping people and helping people to understand their health so that they can go out and help other people yeah uh crystal's advice for lat width haha <laughs> see they got me not you uh since her lats are wider than robert's are are thicker <laughs> um see the the crystal secret to lat width is that she, i'm an uh, angel and i really can just fly <laughs> no those are those are bat wings or devil <laughs> um what <laughs> um i don't know 
wide grip lat pull downs, but with a very nice stretch at the very top of the movement. Yeah. It's probably like one of my favorite movements. Truly excited about y'all's home and compound. You guys deserve this. Thank you so very much. Yeah, we're super you. excited. Um, we're excited to just use this as a much more conducive environment for bringing people out here. Like before, like where we are currently, not in the house, but at the warehouse that we have not yet moved out of. It's like, it was like we would have people visit and they would be sleeping on a futon in a closet, you know, practically. Um, this would be much better because we could bring people out here. They'll have a space. They'll have a, they'll have a better space. Then we'll have the building, like we'll be able to have much better environment. Like the podcast studio is going to be much bigger to be able to interact with people. The gym will be much better for interacting with people. We're excited to use this new space to, to add more value. What do you like that? This is funny. She said, look out like and people will be flocking to Keto Brick. I have a feeling she said that because you're like, yeah, anyone could just stop by anytime. Yeah. We don't work here. We just stand around all day. Sunny will be working at front desk. There you go. Um, I think people forget that you can't just grow one body part without growing everything else with it. Example, for a better bench, you need a better back. 1,000%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's Happy up? Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. What's up, ma'am? And I lost all my weight using a Smith machine. I've outgrown my free gym. LOL. Yeah, I don't. We, we talked over the smack about uh, Smith machines. But, like, Smith machines are great. I just see a lot of people yeah. using them and developing bad habits. And you can lose a bunch of weight and you can gain a bunch of muscle, but they're not always going to be beneficial for what someone is trying to go, trying to accomplish. Robert and I could not use a Smith machine and accomplish everything that we want to, but I started using it. I started going to the gym and I used a Smith machine. There was nothing wrong with it, but I advanced from that and decided that I wanted to grow in more or different ways um we're not talking smack about it it's just facts yeah. you ask anyone if a smith machine is going to give you proper squat form and they're going to tell you no because it doesn't um and everybody's body is going to be so different you're going to hold the bar different on your back you're going to lean forward or more uh, or further back um it all just depends on your body mechanics yeah andy hart says thanks you bet andy keto chris Thor kick my butt yeah um, bucket list to do coaching with one of you. Well, we are happy to do so. Um, uh, kudos for your coaching mentality. Do you see a pattern in what causes a client to go off track? Um, yeah, it's a little bit different for everybody because everybody's, you know, home life, lifestyle factors, environmental factors are the reasons that they do go off track typically. And that's going to be a little bit different for everybody. But at the end of the day, it all stems down to people's environmental factors holding more importance in their minds than that nutritional or physical goal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's easy to do. Like everybody's busy. Everybody's got like, you know, like if you got a bunch of kids, if you're in school, if you've got a crazy career, if you're staying at play, like it's very hard to, to, you know, justify taking the time to be dialed in with your nutrition, dialed in with your training, go to the gym, you know, spend an hour at there at the gym training, then come back, shower. Like it's a time, it's a time sink. Um, but for me, it's like you do it long enough that you recognize the benefit in it. And that becomes your solid foundation. Like if the world is going to hell in a handbag, but I've just got two things in check, my two things being my training and my nutrition, then that gives me at least a foothold that I can have to claw my way out of the hole that I'm in and get better in life. And once I made that mental shift, I, I never once deviated from that being a priority. So that's my take on that. Bring people, bring people to Durango instead and I'll host y'all for free barracks style in a beautiful spot. I can't keep up with you running, man. Mm -hmm. You smoke me. I'm a ketogenic seven years couch potato who's looking to start carnivore and build muscle. What should I know and be aware of? Woo, um, that's a loaded question. That is a, that is a very involved question. But I tell you, like everybody wants to know, you know, is it 100% nutrition and or is it 50% nutrition, 50% training? That they want, they want to break it down and have this ratio. Training is so incredibly important. And I'm probably going to sound biased being a bodybuilder, but when you look at how your 
is from a muscle retention standpoint, from a bone density standpoint. I mean, you look at any elderly individual, any elderly individual that's been living a very active, fit lifestyle. They literally look 40 years long, younger than someone that's the same age and has never picked up a weight or never really lived a physical lifestyle. Having muscle, being mobile, um, having good flexibility, good mobility, good joint structure, like that's all going to come as a byproduct of training. And that is going to carry you into a much more fulfilling, healthy life long after you have grandkids. So let that be a motivating factor for sure. Uh, that helps a lot with coaching. I swear next show I'm hiring you. When, Let's do it, ma'am. When's a new flavor of brick coming out? It's getting close. Yeah, we're going to do all of the exciting things after our move, for yeah, sure. All the exciting things will be after the move. Thoughts on doing a weekend keto camp at the compound? Oh, it's going to happen. Oh. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I got plans. You literally are going to be camping. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a field right there next there to the compound. Is. We have some TT set up. Uh, it's more than just bad habits on the Smith machine. You lose your body's ability to strengthen the small stabilizing muscles. Exactly. Yeah, I'm all about the stabilizing muscles. Mm -hmm. It is normal for your butt to be sore after squats. Is it normal for your butt to be? Yes, if you're doing it. Yeah, if you're going down super <laughs> deep, like if you're going down, quote unquote, ass to grass, then your butt should be sore for sure. Yeah, I think everyone would love to visit y'all one day, LOL. Let's do it. Well, there um, is. Camping, I'm in. See, we got camping. It's, it's going to happen. Yeah, apparently. Um, a camp out would be fun. That's so See? funny. Let's you do guys. a camp out. We're going to have a big old campfire, big old bonfire, roast a whole pig, um, work wh out. What do you do when the same cut of meat has different macros? Boneless, skinless, chicken thighs show a 30% fat on some, but others it says 70 or 47%. But they are the exact same size, exact same. Who do I trust? The main thing that I would recommend doing in that situation is just try and get the, the food from the same place each time and then just use those macros every time. And even if it's not 100% accurate, it'll eventually average out. And then the manipulations you make will be based off of how your body responds to the macros that are actually in it. So then you can adjust, make adjustments accordingly. Also, if you're trying to be really strict, then I would just not get chicken thigh yeah. or, you know, or those certain kind of cuts where everything could be all over the place. Uh, priorities. Fire, Jonathan says. Robert, what are you drinking? LOL. Guess. Guess. What do you think I'm drinking? I said if you the reverse beginning. all the way back to the beginning, Robert explained it. Um, it is a keto whiskey and Coke on a Wednesday. It's, Hardcore. It's <laughs> mindset, I think. And then they said, you rock, deciding to embrace non-life-threatening challenges as opportunities. Boom. Would love to do carnivore plated dinner or keto plate played dinner, the keto brick compound. What? Hey, Keto Chef oh, Max. I see. That makes The a door lot is fun. open to you anytime, man. You, you know can my come number. cook for me anytime. Yeah, you just let me know, man. I'd love to get you out there. We'll do a full-blown like keto cooking compounds. That's a tongue twister in itself. Yeah. Podcast you. finale. That would be really or not fun. finale. It sounds like, you know, ending, but um, we, we would make some good content for sure. Thank you for always. Thank you always for your amazing generosity. It always touches the heart so widely. Awesome. Thank you. Or cook for that camping retreat. Yeah, we can do that too. <laughs> what are you guys training? Uh, why are you, Why are guys training butt so much now? Um, I don't know that I've seen that, but that's really funny that you said that. We don't ever go out and say, okay, I'm going to train butt today. Why are guys, though? Why are guys training butt so much now? I don't know. Like, I've always just trained squats the right way. It's really funny. And We've always done um, hip thrusts, too. Not always, but we do a lot of hip thrusts. Have we done? I've done them for a long time. I feel like i got a pretty good booty. Yeah. I think it's However, because of my squats. It is. <clears throat> if you actually look at the... the like a, Visual if you actually of look the muscle. No, if you look at the muscle of a human being, the butt is huge. Like it's a huge muscle, and just like everything else, you have to build your glutes just as you do your legs, your back, your chest, your everything. So it's super important to build it all. Um, but I've never been a fan of like booty bumpers, booty yeah. whatevers, because you can do the same exact thing doing sumo squats. Regular squats. 
girls, seemingly, all the girls that are doing like all the booty specific exercises, like the 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 cute little booty burn exercises that are advertised on Instagram, they don't have half the butt as the girls that are like, yeah, I did my squats today. It's you know? so true. Like start to pay attention to it and you'll notice that the people who focus a lot more on like heavier movements or just even compound movements or um I don't know. You'll just you'll no, you'll notice. You do deep squats. You'll notice that they don't have to buy specific brand leggings to make their butt look, look good. Yeah, you do deep <laughs> squats and you wind up with a heavy duty booty. That a heavy be, duty booty. That should be a workout in itself. Robert, um, is there a hotel near though? LOL. I have to be under a trusting covering for this camping lol yeah you're gonna have to drive a minute We're to a hotel open star camping like if you have a tent you can't see the, the stars do you have any cool toys like an air arv or big guns not your arms haha -ha. um i've always wanted a side by side i haven't bought a side by side atv I, I was like what is an arv yeah That's i like, need i'd like to get a side by side but i probably shouldn't do that until i get a a tractor or a lawnmower at least first or a truck that runs properly yeah that'd be um good. keto chef max Uh, there it goes. All right, now we got sound, right? Darn now it all. Sound. Not sure wow, what's going sirs. on there. You just missed us talking about Robert's booty pig. It's fine. <laughs> I think um, it's kind of how, like how girls don't train upper body as much. Girls tend to always go towards lower body. Guys go for biceps and upper body. You got to have full body. Like, I don't know why. It's like it's like guys that skip leg day. Like, guys yeah. that skip leg day, and I was guilty of this. My first, like, year of working out, I didn't hardly do legs. Of course, the first year of working out, I was working out in my dad's shop with pieces of steel he had laying around. So I wouldn't really have a lot of whole good stuff to train legs with, but you got to train the full body. Got it. The only thing I have against squats is that my thighs and quads get so big, but my butt hardly grows. My thighs build too quickly. I have heard that. That is like a, a lot of girls' reasons for not doing squats. So they don't want to It's because their, th their thighs are getting too big. Like their quads are getting too big and they're not growing their glutes or hamstrings enough. I I don't have the, that problem. I have the hard time growing the quad problem. I don't know. I think <clears throat> I think when you got a good hamstring sweep and quad sweep, that's that's a good thing. You know, like that's good. Yeah. I wish my quads would grow. Yeah. My guy. Shredded cheese when you pass gas, 3% body fat. I had to share that. I'm dying. What? What does that mean? Who knows? Keto Rhodes talking. That Who sounds knows? gross. Dad joke problems. Shredded Dad joke cheese problems. when you pass gas, 3% body fat. I don't understand. Just being a goober. Red bean and rice to grow that butt. Red beans and rice. I promise you don't need it. Yeah, I just do a keto bricks and steak. Yeah, steak will do it. Um, all right, y'all, we're 34, almost 35 minutes in. We have three lambs to butcher, so we're going to start butchering lambs, get the grinder uh, rock and rolling, get the, the meat shredder. Um, so that is all I got to say about that. It's been an absolute pleasure visiting with y'all, as always. Y'all take care. Toodaloo. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll talk to you next time. Adios. See ya.